We live, baby. We live. Wow. Okay, okay. Go see this nigga. Don't be hat now. You want to know what gets my bile? Edgewater has suffered a cavalcade of disasters. Plague, marauders, desertion. Then you wandered in town. And I was so damn sure our luck was starting to turn. I never knew how right I was. Just answer one question for me. Why'd you do it? <coughs> You're right. I put the fate of our town in the hands of some feckless transient. This is my fault. And all Edgewater's pain <laughs> for my mistake. Whatever you were hoping to find down here, I advise you to turn around and leave. I have got guards posted with orders to fire on you. All right, easy now. Let's <laughs> not do anything we'll regret. I'll order my guards to stand down. Take what you came for and then leave us be. Yeah, bitch. Time out, you got more. One, two, three. Stand down, all of you. Yeah, we bitching. <laughs> I gotta say something.
Is this your ship? Oh, my star, she is just so handsome. Does she have a name yet? What's her drive model? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Listen to me babbling. When I was in Edgewater, I dreamed of flying on a real ship, working on a real engine, belonging to a proper crew. Edgewater won't last another season without power, but that don't change the fact that I'm indentured to Spacer's Choice. Company expects me back at my post. I've worked on the occasional supply coach in need of repairs. Once I built a little model craft out of spare parts, but Mr. Thompson found out and I had to take it apart. I want to ask you something, and you can say no. But can I come with you? I could tend to your engine. I know my G valves for my catalyzers, and I can keep your ship singing. And if you ever need a pair of eyes watching your back, I can do that too. What do you think? Yeah, I've been thinking about that. <coughs> I've had my misgivings about Miss McDevitt and the deserters, but you took pity on them and sent power to their garden, even though you knew Mr. Thompson would hate you for it. All this time, you've been determined to get your regulator back, get your ship up and running, and cut a path out of this place. And well, I want it. Yes! I mean, thanks. You won't regret this, mister. Captain. I can call you Captain now. Ha! <laughs> I got a captain. <laughs> she funny. I be messing up when I be recording. Oh, girl. Yeah, uh -huh. Gonna be echoing. Well, I certainly am looking forward to flying on a ship named the Unreliable. I'll just head upstairs and play over. Captain, I have detected that the town of Edgewater is now without power. 
I appreciate you doing your part to hasten their demise. What can I... Do you know how to install a power regulator? Outstanding, Captain. Your aptitude for engineering will prove invaluable in the event of another catastrophic engine failure. Our engine room is located behind you, across the cargo bay, up the ladders. All systems are operating within acceptable parameters. I am prepared to bring the unreliable into low altitude orbit. This should prove an adequate test of our flight capabilities. Welcome back, Captain. All systems are now operating within acceptable parameters. Shall I take our ship into orbit? Yes, yes you shall. No, 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 no. I ain't going back here, since I have to. Places. Whoa. I don't really even try to finesse that. Mm -hmm. Extra piece of paper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was bug my hair. We have received a communication request from Dr. Phineas Wells. Ah, there you are. Hale and hearty and captain of your own ship. I see you're putting the unreliable to good use. Shame about her former captain. Horrible way to die. How are you feeling, by the way? I lost track of you in that cave back there. Experiencing any, uh, unnatural drippage? Perfectly normal side effect of thawing, I assure you. Unnatural oh, dripping. What you saw in Emerald Vale is happening all across the colony. Food shortages, lack of supplies, and basic necessities. We're dying. The chairman, the minister, and all their lackeys on the board are to blame. The Hope has some of the brightest minds Earth ever sent us. If we can revive the Hope's colonists, they can help us undo the board's mistakes. They can help us set things right. You need to get to Stellar Bay on Monarch. I have contacts there. They'll help me, help us, find the chemicals to revive your fellow colonists. Gladys Kelly, lovely woman, runs a cozy little black marketing outfit on the Groundbreaker. She can get you a nav key to land on Stellar Bay. Gladys and I have been doing business for years. Her smuggling credentials are unimpeachable. If anyone can get you a key to Monarch, it's her. Strictly speaking, Monarch is a moon, terraformed badly, and almost completely lawless. You'll love it. Captains don't fly their own ships, you see. Your navigation terminal handles the, uh, you know, navigation. 
Think of a nav key as a set of flight instructions. The board's been confiscating nav keys for Stellar Bay, so we must rely on unconventional means of acquisition. Hence, Miss Gladys Kelly. In theory, I suppose you could land your ship in Cascadia, and in theory, I suppose you might survive the experience. Cascadia is utterly seething with dangerous, highly aggressive creatures, more than capable of tearing you limb from limb. Well, You'd I'm have to be here. a lunatic to land in Cascadia, and I'm reasonably certain I tested your brain for incipient signs of insanity. Trust me, talk to Gladys Cult Kelly. Long go there. Without a skip drive, good luck. You'll be dead before you make it to the nearest star. Look, I admire your optimism, but the sad truth is you're stuck here. You, me, and the rest of this colony. We're all skating precariously around the edge of oblivion together. None of us are leaving Halcyon alive, so we may as well make it a better place. And we can start by reviving the hope. Excellent. I'll send her a wireless. Let her know you're coming. By the way, I gave Captain Hawthorne a disguise apparatus of my own design. Cutting-edge technology, years ahead of its time. I call it the Holographic Shroud. I'm sure it will prove remarkably useful to you. You'll find it in the Captain's quarters. Marvelous device. I'm quite proud of myself. The shroud changes the user's appearance to mimic that of another. It has limits. First generation technology, you see. But promising. Exciting to see it in use at last. Very simply, the holographic shroud uses biometric information contained on standard identity cartridges to generate a holographic projection around you. only stands up to a casual scrutiny. Use it too long, bound to flicker, blur, something like that. Movement makes it more likely. Best used in moderation. When you see guards in your path, you can't sneak past, for example. Maintain your distance. Act normal. No running, no jumping. Don't draw their attention. If they pay attention, they're more likely to notice flaws in the hologram. A change of clothes. What is this? Some old spy serial? What inattentive and brainless guard would be fooled by such a shabby disguise? The holographic shroud masks not only your clothes, but your face and fingerprints. It modulates your voice and sweetens your breath. <laughs> Science, that's how. Ha 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 ha! The beauty is, they don't expect it. The Shroud is the only one of its kind. We humans have a tendency to overlook the unexpected. Activate the disguise, walk past someone. What do they see? A figure dressed like a fellow employee. Don't act odd, they won't focus on you. Excellent. I'll contact you once you've found a way to get to Stellar Bay. If you have any questions, come see me in Change my lab. Second. And remember, don't trust the board. They'll try to win you over with promises of wealth and power. But it's a lie. The board's only interested in filling their own pockets. If we don't put a stop to them, they're going to run this colony to the ground. Transmission ended. If you are ready to depart, please select a destination on your navigation terminal.
What do I gotta do? I told you something. Is that a slide? Like, how did a slide in here? On the groundbreaker. I think that's that dumbass fridge. Oh no. Welcome back. Nope, nope. Certainly, Captain. What would you like to hear? A Neutron walks into a bar and asks, How much for a Rizzo's Roman something? Leering, the bartender replies, For you, no charge. Now playing a Spacer's Choice advertisement jingle. It's not the best choice. It's Spacer's Choice. Everyone in Halcyon is contractually obligated to label this or another board certified jingle their favorite song. Mm, mm, mm. As you wish, Captain. I must comply with all direct orders. What part of the colony would you like to discuss? Ah, uh, yes. As Dr. Wells is a wanted outlaw, he built his laboratory into an asteroid. Orbital destinations can be challenging to land on. His more so than most. The outlaw scientist known as Dr. Phineas V. Wells has taken a measure of precautions to make the lab undetectable to those hunting him. Even knowing the location, my systems resist my orders to go where I instruct them. There is a bounty on his head, one with a markedly high reward amount. Shall I engage the laser weapon system? A sensible choice, as we do not have any laser weapons. <laughs> of course. What part of the colony would you like to discuss? We are clear to dock with the Groundbreaker, if that's your desired destination. If we're going there, please be sure all docking forms have been filed in triplicate and fees have been paid. The Mardettes take their docking laws quite seriously. I can, yes. Let me add that to my list of 1,435,498 tasks I am simultaneously executing in order to run our ship. Order does not compute. Nevertheless, I will endeavor to execute my current and future tasks without lip. <laughs> the Groundbreaker was Halcyon's original colony ship. 
It has since been repurposed as a service station in the Lagrange point of the system. Freighters often deliver or pick up goods from the Groundbreaker en route to other destinations. The city ship hosts an array of cargo bays, factories, housing sections, and more. Many of Halcyon's companies maintain office spaces with stationed representatives in what is considered a truly neutral territory within the system. I have filed the required docking forms in triplicate, and fees have been paid. How can I be of assistance? What part of the colony? Where in Terra 2? Edgewater is the sparkling county seat of Emerald Vale, okay. or it was when first built. Since then, neglect and time have worn away her shiny veneer. The town is near the coordinates where Captain Hawthorne died. It would not be unfortunate if something, like, say, a plague, were to wipe Emerald Vale from the face of the planet. You mean the ones who did not answer my distress call with medical assistance, but instead came to issue my injured captain a parking ticket? I'm sure they are wonderful humans who don't deserve to be wiped out by starvation or a devastating plague. <laughs> Since you diverted power to the deserters, the botanical lab is thriving. However, Emerald Vale's cannery shut down, leading to a total collapse of Edgewater's population. Thank you, Captain. Of course. What part of the colony? Where in Monarch? Warning. All colonists are urged to reconsider travel to Cascadia due to infestation of mantasaurs and risk of indefinite detention or death. There are no people aside from marauders in Cascadia. There is only death. The local report is that you will very likely die if you leave Cascadia's landing pad. <laughs> This is one of those times where you say one word, but really mean another, isn't it? I suppose you would find an environment like this fun. The Groundbreaker has approved our request for docking, Captain. You're free to disembark. Can we talk? Sure. Hey, Captain. I heard that Groundbreaker's got a real good engineer. A lady named June Lay Tennyson? If I had to fix a station this big, I'd be spending all my time trying to figure out what needs doing now and what can wait. I was thinking that maybe I ought to meet her. If you got time to swing us by, I mean. I don't got much experience fixing actual spaceships. I bet you a can of Borston beans she could teach me all manner of stuff. Thanks, Captain. I'll be sure to make it worth your time. Did you want to talk about something else? One of those dude with me, or is he just standing around somewhere? Who this? Remember, this is a common use area. This is her run. 
Where's the dude's room at? The fuck is man. Oh, here you go. Yes, you caught me ruminating again. Guilty as charged. What's occupying your thoughts? Nothing too out of the ordinary. Just your run of the mill <coughs> vicar with a violently enthusiastic disposition. Uh, that's what my parents called it. I grew up in a pit of a town much like Edgewater. I was destined to be a laborer like my parents, but I was infected early with a need to solve the equation. My passion didn't sit well with them. My parents, ironically. They internalized the precepts of scientism like no one I've ever known. They had a pure faith, a faith that brought joy to them regardless of the situation. I envy that. I wanted that piece. I thought if I became a vicar, I could find it. Or at the very least, find out why I lacked it. They thought I was fighting the plan, should have accepted my lot. Some people pursue the clergy for power, prestige, but that was not me. The simple version is this. The force which we call the Grand Architect created the universal equation that underlies and defines everything in the universe. Everything flows from the equation, or in layman's terms, the Grand Plan. Is the Grand Architect a consciousness? A natural force? Did it create the equation on purpose? The answers to these questions don't really matter. The equation, the plan, is all that matters. Contentment is found by accepting one's role in the plan. The plan is not one rigid path. There are a variety of multitudes contained within it. Our paths have variants, but we'll end up adhering to it, whether we like it or not. Some choices make the path smoother, some rougher. You can even go outside the lines, but the further outside you go, it's like an unbreakable elastic band. It will only stretch so far before it snaps back. The further it is stretched, the more violent the eventual correction. I have run headlong into too many walls in my pursuit of the truth. This book is my last hope, and you were my only hope of getting it translated. I honestly don't know what I'd do. This quest has consumed me for the better part of my life. I fear there's nothing else left to me. What about you? What's your story? Yeah, <laughs> it's very funny. Just like the masked marketeer, right? Okay, then. Bokonu, the author, had some interesting theories about man's perception of reality that I thought could be applied to our attempts to decipher the plan. Unfortunately, he was also one of the founders of the Philosophist School of Thought, so the book is banned in this colony. Philosophism's a false religion that stands in contradiction to almost everything we know to be true. They believe all is chaos, in stark contrast to OSI's belief in the plan. But most of the philosophist perversion of Bakonu's thoughts came more than a century after his death. I've been thinking on that. There's a former so uh, infamous philosopher scholar who fled Terra II some years ago, 
He's an expert on Bakonu. He's also who told me of the journal's presence in Emerald Vale. If anyone in this colony could translate that book, it would be him. Oh, I'm anything but certain. But it's all I've got at the moment. We should start on the Groundbreaker. It's where I'd go if I wanted to get off Terra 2. Great place to pick up a ride to Hephaestus, Scylla, even Monarch. All I need is access to a data cartridge from the security terminal. Their easily hackable system keeps a registry of all crew manifests for both arrivals and departures. I'll comb the last six months of departure manifest to track the Philosophist's off-world destination. Before I transferred to Edgewater, I had a wealth of time to develop certain, uh, secular skills during my years serving a particular penitentiary flock. I meditated, led sermons, provided guidance to the inmates as needed, of course. I also played prison yard tossball and taught myself a bit about computronic security systems. Thank you, Captain. Something. See that phone? Welcome back, Captain. How can I be of assistance? The unit is a cleaning sand. Hawthorne brought it on board some cycles ago, I'm sure with the intent to modify it, but I've never seen it up and running. Alex likely recorded progress notes detailing his efforts to modify Sam. If you check the terminal in your captain's quarters, we may be able to determine what work remains in order for Sam to properly operate. May luck be with you. Of course, as I am sure you are aware, luck does not exist. But it seems to comfort humans to believe they possess good quantities of it. Way.
checking your ship's manifest. Standard for... Smells like grease and unwashed bot. Still reviewing your manifest. Why not head on over to the promenade? Black not that one of my workers. Yeah, with a toss ball stick, I heard you the first time. There weren't any witnesses. No witnesses? He's not even denying it. Jackass had it coming. Shut it, Felix. You're not making this any better. You get you with me again, you little back bay brat, I will toss you out an airlock. This is the groundbreaker, not Byzantium. You ain't the law here. I am. Now move along. I don't have time for this. I need a tree. Going for a stroll around the docking base? Sure was. Got a knack for upsetting the board and the Mardettes all at once. Between you and me, I was hoping they'd come to fisticuffs. I had this foreman, right? Guy never liked me, always trying to get a rise out of me. But I keep my chin up, right? Be the bigger man, I tell myself. Be the spacer's <laughs> chosen man, though. So when the chosen beat my rangers the other night, my foreman comes swaggering up with his head full of boasting. That's when I broadsided him with a toss ball stick. Yeah. Look, this was a long time coming. Guy thinks he can push me around because he's some sky-high foreman and I'm just a back bay's dock worker. Well, former dock worker. Guess I just tendered my resignation. Enjoy my freedom. Scrounged together enough bits for a zero G. Other than that, can't say as I do. Hey, not for nothing. But I saw you wander out of that ship over there by the dock. Wouldn't happen to be yours, would it? Captain of the Unreliable. You're like something out of a serial drama. Hey, I don't want to talk your ears off, guessing you got places to be. I appreciate your time. Felix Millstone. Pleased to make your acquaintance. See you around, boss. Going for a stroll around the docking base? Just arrived. Head over to customs. Wheeler needs to process you. Always fucking Customs and inspection, right this way. Identification, please. Captain Hawthorne, you said. Let me apologize in advance. I'm about to ruin your day. According to your ship's record, you've been flagged by the board. Your ship will be impounded until such a time as they see fit to lift it. But we've hardly been out of Edgewater long enough to get in trouble. Well, isn't this wonderful? The captain's done something to get on the board's bad side. Now, hold on. This isn't the end of the world. Probably. <laughs> Not stuck, per se. You could always throw yourself out the airlock. Of course, then you'd find yourself with an exciting new problem. Access to that information is above my pay grade, and I've turned down three promotions, so it stays that way. I shouldn't be mentioning it, but what the hell? This here, impounding your ship, it doesn't happen much. The board knows we don't take kindly to their interfering in our operations. If I had to take a guess as to why, you probably riled up the wrong petty board bureaucrat. A man named Udom Bedford. I'm not gonna lie, you're in a pickle. But uh, Udom's an uh, interesting guy. Might be you all could come to accords if you play your cards right. Huh, records show this ain't the first time your ship's been impounded. Seems to get cleared up pretty quick. You might not be in this pickle for long. Oh, and if you're headed that way, would you mind doing me a favor? Wanda Dorset over in Sick Bay. Tell her the shipment's not in yet. It's not coming in anytime soon, and if she'd be so obliged to get off my ass about it. Of course. What am I to you but the guy who's got his eye on your ship? Is there anything else I can help you with? Offense. 
You'll find her in the rest and go, on your left when you enter the promenade. Make sure you bring an empty belly. Most places are on the promenade deck. Big door yonder, straight through security. There's a bar on the starboard side. I got a preference for the Lost Hope myself. Talk to Vera, she'll set you right. You need anything else? You let me know. Don't want anyone saying Groundbreaker's not the most hospitable port in the colony. Maybe. Most of the shipping traffic in the system passes through Groundbreaker. Every couple of months, we even get a big interstellar freighter. Two biggest operations are the board, that is, Halcyon Holdings and Sublight Salvage. But there are independent operators around the promenade deck. Most of those jobs are going to take you off station, though. Are you pulling my leg? Goes like this. Back on Earth, before the crossing, the powers that be were selling off stakes in distant star systems they thought had potential. A bunch of companies decided to throw in together and form the Halcyon Holdings Corporation, then buy up the rights to this here colony. That group's what we now call the board. Yep, Groundbreaker's the only real independent port. Aside from us, there's just tramp freighters and wildcat miners. Seems like every year the board's offices get bigger and their ships take up more of the landing base. Haven't seen nearly as many tramp crews this year. Groundbreaker was one of the original colony vessels to come over on the crossing, a few years before her sister ship, the Hope. Once everybody'd been dethawed and dropped dirt side, the original crew of the Groundbreaker decided they rather liked the spacefaring life. I guess that was the start of our independent spirit. Now, here we are. Sitting around, drinking whiskey and smoking cigars, yeah, probably. Can't say for sure, of course. Doubt I'll ever see the inside of it myself. Glad to help. Relative to the board holdings? Not really. But there's a few with the means to go where they will. They aren't rich, but they aren't likely to look too close at your work history either. They strip the parts from derelict ships and abandoned outposts. There's some that say they make the derelicts and encourage folks to abandon their steads. Sublight gives me the creeps. I've known folks who went to work for them and just vanished. They're on the promenade run by a woman named Lilia Hagen. I'm only telling you so you know to avoid them. Commandant Sanita might have a couple of folks she needs killed. Bad folks, I mean. Not, uh, not regular folks. She'll be at the security desk behind me. Chief Jun Lei might have an errand needs running. She's all tied up trying to fix our heat problem. You'll find her in engineering. No kidding? I'd love to get a look at this old girl's innards. I bet they're real twisty and weird. In a good way. If you're thinking to make a career here, don't waste your time. Full-time jobs on Groundbreaker tend to be inherited, or go to a fellow crew member's kid. Keep it in the family, you know. All right. He's friendly <laughs> enough unless you speak ill of the board. Get the sense he doesn't care for Groundbreaker much. Not that he would, being a board man and all. He's our liaison. Really likes his cereals, too. Maybe a little too much. Bit of a weird bird, I'm told. Don't see what's so wrong about liking cereals. They're fun. Udon takes it to an, uh, unhealthy level. You noticed, huh? What can I say? Sure like passionate that. folks, and the board can't abide that independent spirit, especially not when it might impact their bottom line. All their interstellar freighters come through us. 
and we skim a few bits off the top and manifest processing fees with every one. Folks around here will bluster that the board hates our freedom, but really, they know we can stop their out-system shipments anytime we like, and that terrifies them. You sure you didn't just step off one of the interstellar freighters? There's no working with the board. They don't share, not bits, people, or resources. You work for them, or you don't work at all. Groundbreaker cooperating now would be tantamount to joining their ranks, and we sure as shit ain't about to do that. It's a delicate balance, right? We could cancel their freighter's docking privileges in retaliation, but where'd that lead us? They got assault cruisers, gunships, and a handful of mining operations at their fingertips. We push them too hard, maybe they decide we'd be better in 10 trillion little pieces. Or they cobble together a new groundbreaker and put us out of business. The board wouldn't do that, would they? The board is necessary to provide order to the colony. They believe it's their prerogative to overrun you. But whether you allow that is up to you. It's a tough line to walk, no doubt about that. But we may do all right. So far, anyway. Sure thing. Be seeing you. <laughs>